It got a bit cold today again. Um, you might be, I don't know if you remember Pegleg, the seagull. They're still around after, what, two or three years at least. I mean, it must, must be more than that actually. But he keeps coming around and his body language is, <laughs> seagull's body language, he, he comes up. Actually, the best way to show you this is to uh, <laughs> use my duck. <laughs> it's a clothes bush, by the way. It used to be my grandma's. So this seagull, peg leg, I call him, he comes around. He comes out when I'm sitting on the step having a cup of coffee in the morning sometimes. And, he comes up and he does he does that <laughs> and he reminded me of um Shubas, um on he's got one of them drinking birds that do that all the time well this seagull he he sort of puts his head down and what he's saying is feed me feed me feed me i'm hungry <laughs> And it's the way it comes up the steps because, you know, we've got these concrete steps, right? And um, I don't know if you can imagine this, but he hops up the step like that. He hops up the steps and he comes up really close to like two, three, maybe two feet away from me. Maybe three feet, actually. But obviously, if you move around and shuffle too much, it, it, he backs off a bit. But he's... He's very tame. Now, we're not supposed to feed the birds, you see. You're not supposed to feed the seagulls because it it, um, it breaks their uh, natural instinct, their natural um, um, the way they the way they normally live. Anyway, it breaks them out of that routine of going out and collecting catching fish and I, I talk to him sometimes this seagull I mean he comes up to me and he's sat there looking at me he's, you know so sort of waving a nodding his head about and and I'm thinking I said to him I said to him, the seagull I said why don't you go and catch some fish you know obviously he doesn't understand me I don't think but I said why don't you go and catch fish you know maybe there's not enough fish in the sea and I'm thinking maybe there isn't maybe the fishermen have taken it all off yeah, so but occasionally you feel sorry for him, right? And if I've got a bit of old bread lying around, I'll I'll throw a bit out on the grass. Now it was a bit startling actually what happened the other day. I had a bit of bread of three slices that were been in the fridge for a while because warmer weather you have to keep it in the fridge, right? And I got some fresh I got a fresh loaf of bread and I threw a bit out on the grass and and this other seagull comes swooping down, right? Sticks his thing up under his feathers of this peg legged seagull. Sticks his, his uh, beak around and it really uh, won't let go of him. I'm thinking, that's mean, that's just mean. So there's, uh, there's a little bread line, there's another piece of bread line over there, for God's sake, you know, and it, they just. This, they attack each other, you know, they, they must be so freaking hungry. Um, it's sad really, but you, you try to help them, like, and then all you end up doing is cause them to attack each other. It's just, it's just crazy. I don't know, there's, you talk about food shortages, I mean, there must be a shortage in the sea as well, because if they're, if they're out looking for scraps of bread and stuff. I mean, we all used to go down to the pond to the duck to feed the ducks. I mean, it's a natural thing. It's just instinctive. You you naturally want to help the bird, birds and the wildlife, but then there are legislations and things put in place that say you can't do this, you can't do that. And well, what do you want to do? Let them die? Starvation? Because you got to, you know, the, the it's nature, isn't it? But you at the same time, you're thinking, oh, uh, yeah, I don't want to break their natural habits. You know, I don't want to interrupt their... Um, but you see, they've already 
messed up anyway. They're already messed up because they're making the nests on chimney pots, for God's sake, instead of on the cliff. So what do you do? You know. So most of the time he comes up, he's bowing his head at me. You know, and he's like begging. Um, your heart goes out to him like, and then you think, oh, no, I'll just give him a little bit of bread. But you... You can't make a habit of doing it because if you do it it does interfere with um natural um behavior characteristics and all that and um a few years ago there um there was a culling thing going on where the authorities would go and thin, thin them out a bit but now the problem is, um, there's too many of them, um, and they're all fighting each other for scraps of food because there's not enough to go around, basically. So you can't win. Um, there's a preservation society who want who wants to keep protect the life, the bird life, and the trouble is, you end up with too many, and uh, then. There's not enough to go around and then you see another side effect which is you see babies sometimes baby seagulls dead on the side of the road because they've been hit by a car because as obviously as population goes up the odds of accidents happening increases you know it's just it's just a fact of st statistics so um occasionally you have to i've reported a couple of incidents you know to the um, wildlife, you know, birds, what do you call it, wildlife in Whitby, I think it's called, it's a wildlife preservation thing, a rescue or something, I've got the name now, but um, <clears throat> it's just, it's a shame when you see that um, there are people who want to preserve them, their natural habitats and their natural evolution and everything, but the trouble is we are not in a natural situation because there's a food shortage and there's overpopulation of the birds and um, it's inevitably going to cause other problems so yeah i don't know what i'm waffling all about but you know anyway so i'm making a video i'm i'm just encoding a video at the moment on the computer i don't know if you can see it but i'm just videoing i'm just encoding it so it's another eight minutes and i'm going to be uploading that so to do with the bedroom computer i managed to fix it again and this time I did a restoration from a, a backup that I made in 2012, which basically means the backup was 12 years old. Anyway, I got sick of the problems and it seems to have fixed it finally. Um, there, was a, there was something wrong in the other operating system, the other XP. Something was damaged in there. Either it was either malware or a virus or there was some sort of corrupt file that was causing it to freeze up during boot time and it kept anyway long story short you're going to see that when i upload the video which it should be i'll, I'll probably make it go live next friday so it's the 27th today my god this month's flown by it's really flown by um so it should be um let's see in about three days time because when you watch this it'll be nearly three days probably um <clears throat> so yeah i'm just getting that finished off right now so i'd about carrying on with it but um i forgot that i had the other secondary hard drive which is the data drive not the boot drive the other drive I, that was the one i partitioned out the bad sectors so that should be fine. It should last a few years because I don't hardly ever use that machine in the bedroom. I just, when I want to use the laser printer, I've got no room in the front room for the laser printer because it's so freaking massive. It's a huge bit of its thing, you know, you know. And I've got nowhere to put it because I've got my inkjet printer in the front room. And um, so I have to basically just send files across on a USB or over the network to print out in the other room. Um, so it's handy to keep that machine going just for that 
I mean, I'll only switch it on once a blue moon when I need to print somewhere out in good quality, really. I've been getting some annoying black dots on the printout, so uh, actually. So I printed out some uh, my drone video. I printed out some of my drone video that I took. Uh, I took some photographs and so the castle and that. And I keep getting these little black dots on the bottom. I don't think you can see them. Uh, but they're annoying. That's the trouble with lasers the uh, toner if you get something on the drum it doesn't go away quickly mind you my inkjet my inkjet printers caused me a lot of other problems though because uh, it has a tendency to get blockages but yeah you can't win them all anyway i'm waffling too long this video is getting too long so anyway just started out talking about the Seagull, <laughs> the gull. Um, I can't remember what species they are. Somebody told me once, but I've got so many other things in my brain. I just can't. I've got no room for anything else. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye for now.